Hey folks, I know some people are just jumping on, so I just want to give some folks a couple minutes to jump on and, and join us here. And Big thumbs up there. <laughs> I was just going to give a, some folks a couple more, a couple more minutes to jump on. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for jumping on tonight. Hey, Lise. <laughs> Catherine, awesome. Thank you. And uh, I will uh, be sure to comment on that as well. Hello, Mr. Pope. <laughs> so funny. Christina, thank you. What's up, Steve? <laughs> What's up, man? John, how you doing? Uh, this is a, it's quasi-formal, so I don't, uh, don't blame me for uh, loosening my tie here, maybe rolling up my sleeves as well. I do have a short statement to read, but uh, mostly I just wanted to, this to be informal and maybe give you a little tour of uh, tour of my office and just answer any questions, address any major issues in the city that we've been uh, dealing with, uh, and uh, just keep it casual. So, well, uh, first, thank you for joining the live stream tonight, and thanks for your time. Uh, given the given the hour. Uh, I'm sure you're either wrapping up work, you're heading home uh, to your families, or you're getting ready to jump into dinner. So thanks for spending some time with me tonight. Uh, secondly, thank you for the opportunity to serve your city. Uh, thank you for your vote. And uh, thank you for trusting me to lead, uh, lead your city and lead the city uh, into the future. I am the 29th mayor to serve in the city of Plattsburgh uh, after winning a historic primary and gaining more votes than any other mayoral candidate uh, in the history of races in the city. And as you can see, I'm sitting here in my office. I'll give you a tour uh, in, a, in a moment here. Uh, and it is just a fantastic, if you've been outside of the, if you've been outside today, it's just a fantastic, beautiful spring day here in the North Country. Uh, but I wanted to take a moment to be with you uh, tonight to discuss the last 100 days uh, in office, uh, what we've accomplished and certainly what we hope to accomplish in the next uh, coming years. Uh, but before I get into that, I do wanna thank Tracy and Miles and my friends and family here in Plattsburgh and elsewhere. Uh, some of y'all are on, on the live stream right now. Uh, I wanna thank the department heads and city staff who they, you know, day in, day out, work hard, tirelessly, uh, 
to uh, improve and to the betterment of our city and to the Common Council who also worked tire tirelessly to represent the constituents of our city. Uh, one of the biggest and most talked about issues leading up to this election was the relationship that the city and the town uh, have and uh, how we were going to mend those mend those divisions and mend that uh, mend that division and if you saw this week we announced a historic compact that will change the face of that relationship for generations to come uh, the compact outlines uh, the resolution uh, to a number of issues, expands the city's tax base, creates opportunity for a generational transformation. Uh, as some of you have commented here, the investment in our beach, in our waterfront and parks, uh, today I've released a parks report that outlines a lot of the opportunity that we do have in investing in our parks, and it calls for a revisit to developing a recreation program that serves our city in a way uh, that makes sense and shares resources, the resources that the city has with our county partners. And finally, uh, we've outlined to date, we've outlined a number of infrastructure investments that we hope that will make a lasting difference in the city. Uh, these investments include our roads, parks, water, sewer, and technology investments. So I do, I hope, and I do hope that this would be a casual conversation, uh, dialogue with you. And uh, so if you do have any questions or comments, absolutely feel free to share. Um, I will give a tour of my office, like I said. Uh, you'll have to ignore my desk. I generally take a moment at the end of the day to uh, clean up everything, but I haven't had a chance to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, talking about some of the most important things that we, we all know, um, especially with our waterfront, in the parks report itself, uh, the parks report itself outlines a number of our waterfront uh, opportunities. You know, the, the, the thing for us is that oftentimes we talk about our waterfront and we point to the city beach. You know, we don't always point to Sailors Beach. Uh, we don't always point to uh, Sailors Point Park or Wilcox Dock or uh, Dock Street Marina. Uh, we certainly do point to the city beach. And as some of you have noted, and if you've been out there, uh, we have had done, we've done a significant amount of work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, salt lamp, yep. Uh, we've done a significant amount of work on the city beach, clean up the uh, boardwalk, uh, replace some of the boards out there. We're fixing the, the bathhouse, uh, fixing the bathrooms, uh, tearing some buildings down uh, out there, cleaning it up, making it look presentable mm -hmm. and opening it up, uh, getting ready for the beach opening this year. Uh, the... Uh, Sailors Point uh, Park, the park where the bridge is closed. Uh, right now we're sourcing material to fix the bridge. It will be open this year. And, uh, <laughs> hey mom, <laughs> that's my mom by the way. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're fixing that bridge, um, preparing it to be open this year. It's gonna take some time to, find, to source the materials to replace the parts of the bridge. Uh, but the bridge is safe. It's just the wooden pieces in it that need to be fixed and it's been hard to source that material. Um, and then the old, old, um, the old base, uh, marina, which look, I grew up on that marina. That's where we went swimming, uh, as a kid. And, uh, it's certainly heartbreaking to see it in the, um, in the, uh, condition that it's in. Uh, but we're also looking at doing some, uh, cleanup and investments back there. Um, and then also the, uh, uh, the, uh, Dock Street Marina as well. And as we've seen with the, uh, with a number of uh, tourists that we haven't seen and the boat traffic that we haven't seen, you know, there's still opportunities to invest and to grow that um, area along with Wilcox Dock as well. Uh, I do have to say, uh, Brad, Brad, you got me on that one. Shout out to DPW for the extensive amount of work that you all have been doing. Um, it, it really has been. That's probably, I don't want, I'm not saying this to diminish any other department. Every department is, is just as important as the, as the next. Uh, but these folks, they work day in, day out. I've been on the, um, uh, I've shown up to job sites and, and water main breaks. I've, I've come and followed garbage trucks around and to see how they work. And, and Brad and I even spent uh, part of an evening, uh, or I should say morning, really uh, riding around on a snowplow just to see how things work and function and get a better understanding of, of how they work. Um, 
really just trying to be a better manager, trying to be a better, a better mayor so that I, I can understand like how, you know, the pain points and how to make the city operate more efficiently and more effectively, uh, not only for our city employees, but also for um, our, our city in general, our, our, our residents. Yeah, the train, you know, the train is, is certainly a, um, a concern, a long-term concern of ours, uh, especially with the development of Harborside. You know, we have a number of opportunities that we're looking at developing our Harborside. As, as most of us know, the farmer's market is relocating to Harborside. Uh, we have about a $20 million investment into our water treatment facility uh, to not only uh, improve the facade of that facility, but to also do some sound and smell uh, remediation uh, and suppression so that it becomes a little bit more, um, it looks a little bit more uh, presentable to the community. The, as many of you know, if you've, if you've lived here for any amount of time that the uh, parking lot to nowhere is also um, right now in the process of uh, being subdivided for potential development. Uh, once it's subdivided, we are looking at doing a um, an appraisal uh, of that property for value uh, to then enter into some type of development agreement with um, a uh, developer who responded to an RFP last year. So we're looking at developing that property um, and then uh, any improvements that we can make uh, down at our dock as well uh, to to improve that that piece of waterfront. There's a, um, a public art piece going at Peace Point Park uh, down there at Dock Street as well. So, you know, the, the point being, oh, the Harborside Master Plan as well. You know, the, the Harborside Master Plan um, is one of those uh, plans that we are looking specifically at how to develop Harborside, which includes the river that flows up to uh, where the old bridge, uh, where the old bridge is on um, uh, Pine, near Pine Street. Uh, where the Saranac River Trail is going to rebuild that bridge and it's going to go over that bridge. But that Harborside Master Plan really focuses on that entire area uh, and will continue to develop and enhance that area. So we're not done, uh, even though that there are projects in place right now for that area for Harborside. Yeah, that, that, uh, that, that area itself is probably going to be developed uh, and look fantastic, um, uh, a fantastic uh, over the next, hopefully five to seven years, it's going to really be transformed. But the point, the point of all that is the train runs right through that area, if you will. Um, it certainly would be nice uh, to understand that uh, long term, that train would be better located elsewhere uh, for a number of reasons. But uh, yeah, that the the train that and moving the train is going to be a you know, a 20 to 30 year conversation. Um, so we should start that now. That's my point. Uh, CCPT. So uh, for those of you who don't know, Clinton County Public Transit is the public bus system that runs through uh, the county, essentially. A lot of people who uh, don't have cars, uh, either they can't afford to have cars or they choose not to have cars, uh, they leverage that, that system to uh, get back and forth and to get around uh, our community. Uh, we've, we've had a number of concerns about CCPT. You know, when I served on the county, um, when I served on the county uh, legislature, I was a member of the transportation committee a number of times, uh, discussions on CCPT and uh, 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 discussions on CCPT and how to develop that had, ar had arisen. Uh, recently, I believe that they just received a uh, little over a million dollars in, in uh, monies to help improve the system. And there was a survey that actually went out not too long ago on how to improve the system. So we, we do hope that uh, we do see improvements uh, in, on CCPT and uh, really focus on transportation. One of my, um, one of my biggest uh, uh, concerns is a true multimodal um, development plan where we are focused on transporting our people through our city. We're only five square miles in the city of Plattsburgh. And Brad, if you're still on, I don't know how many roads, how many miles of roads that is. But the, the point is, is being able to traverse our city safely um, 
biking and walking, right? Not just really having to rely on cars. Because right now, if you try to, if you do try to traverse our city, uh, you know, you're faced with uh, streets that don't have bike lanes. Some streets don't have sidewalks. Uh, so it's it's really hard to um, tout how walkability, uh, how how walkable how walkable your city is when you don't. In some places, you don't have sidewalks. So really focused on, you know, my intention over the next couple of years is to really focus on a, a transportation plan that at the very least highlights the um, areas where we can install bike lanes. Uh, we have right now uh, $50,000 in capital project to, um, uh, to develop sidewalks uh, and improve our sidewalks. And we'll, look, we'll continue to do that work over the next several years of, in, of uh, creating capital projects to um, uh, creating capital projects to uh, improve walkability uh, and bikeability, and 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 I believe that that goes back to that whole transportation concern, including CCPT, but really having a city that's walkable, bikeable, um, availability of, of public transit, and then um, also um, safe roads and being able to travel safely on the road. Uh, there was actually, it wasn't actually a fire um, that you're referring to. There, there was a concern. Um, it happened just right over, um, right over the bridge on Cumberland Ave. Uh, it was actually on Saley. Um, somebody uh, called the um, city fire because they saw a, uh, a plume of smoke that uh, <laughs> went up from their chandelier and uh, they smelled a little bit of electrical and uh, they ended up, um, the city fire came in, took the, took the unit down, did some testing uh, on the, uh, on the uh, electrical uh, system in the building and then uh, called it a day. So it wasn't necessarily a fire, but it was just right over the bridge. So I, I ended up walking over there. Yeah, the repaving projects and resurfacing projects, there are a number of projects um, let me just take a note here. I will, uh, I'll post those as well. Uh, we do have a number of resurfacing projects in the, on the list this year. Uh, it may not include, uh, it may not include, sorry, my hand is in the way. I'm trying to scroll to see what, uh, Peru, uh, oh, sorry, Hamilton street. It may not include Hamilton street. Uh, but, uh, we did have some problems at Hamilton street a couple of years back with, um, water main breaks and, and uh, if we do repave Hamilton, it, it may end up being a full depth reconstruction, uh, which is a complete different thing than resurfacing. But um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post that um, the uh, uh, street, uh, street resurfacing plan for this year. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, like every single year we do some resurfacing uh, given that, um, uh, given we do get money from the state to do that work. And, uh, you know, we look at the roads that are, that are um, the worst off, and we try to fill the gaps from there uh, as well. Um, I know that there was a comment about parks. Yeah, and, and like I said, I released, um, I don't know if I post, let me make sure that I post the parks report. Um, I did post, a, I did send out a parks report. Um, it's a fairly comprehensive 13 page report on every single park that we have and some of the green space as well, including the bike, say like the bike trail. Yeah, no problem, Mark. Um, it, it, including the, the bike trails. So um, I'll send that out, but essentially that parks report lists, you know, the state of our parks. And, and I will say, and like I've said uh, publicly before, our parks are in, in desperate need for attention um, with the, um, with the uh, defunding or the dissolute, uh, the um, um, uh, dissolution of the uh, recreation department when our when our parks uh, management as well. So you know our parks haven't been qual have maintained with any sincere quality over the last several years, and so um, uh, our our parks haven't been uh, maintained with any sort of quality in the last several years. So even the Hamilton Park, and it's just heartbreaking to see. Uh, it's heartbreaking to see us have to rip out equipment because it's unsafe. Uh, and I posted a video about that a couple weeks ago or maybe last week that, I, look, I'm not going to let Miles play on stuff like that. Why, you know, why would I expect anybody's kid to go, to go play on something like that? So, you know, it's, it's just really sad to see the shape of our parks and we, we, we certainly rely on our parks for recreation and quality of life. 
uh, you know, our kids rely on our parks, our adults rely on our parks, and, and it's just really heartbreaking to see. So that parks report uh, outlines the state of our parks. It, it um, highlights the uh, uh, every amenity in those parks, and then also just the state and what what that park could be, um, what those parks can be used for. Yeah, Chris, uh, around attracting, um, uh, around attracting people, um, and remote workers, a lot of that we are, we're starting to see. And quite frankly, the, the goal of the city is to, uh, is to promote the area, promote the area for, uh, remote, uh, work, uh, or, or even having, uh, tech related uh, jobs locate here, especially with our power rates, with our corporate power rates, looking at um, not just uh, not just uh, job creators and technology, but uh, but also um, but also the ability to grow um, high tech industry like um, like data centers. Matthew, I don't know about an amusement park. I know that I've I've joked, uh, I've joked around about Ferris wheels, uh, and it's a joke. I'm not, quite frankly, I'm not um, advocating to install a Ferris wheel anywhere in the city. But uh, in terms of leveraging our green space, and I think that's, you know, that's really what the city has been focused on is, is looking at what, what kind of green space and park space that we have, and developing that park space um, for attracting. Uh, residents, families, businesses, uh, visitors, uh, and really having that, uh, having that be our focus for how do we attract, attract people here. Yeah, at least, it, you know, we, the best thing that we can do uh, is make our city livable and presentable. Um, a lot of what we see downtown now, and I just walked around, I've been walking around downtown just to see the state of it. Uh, Margaret Street, for example, you know, one of the central areas uh, central areas that we um, uh, uh, do business in is in <laughs> is in horrible disrepair. The street is just so narrow, and it's you know it's hard to navigate for anybody. Uh, one thing that we do need to look at over the next several years is is a redesign, uh, a redesign of that area of Margaret Street to make it look more presentable and, and welcoming. looking at some of the other comments back there. Travis, I will say that part of my job is to, and, and the reason why I show up is, you know, part of my job is to understand the, the, the reality of it. You know, rather than reading something in the news or getting something secondhand, which is important, you know, it's important to see those points of view. It, it, for me, anyway, it's, it's much more valuable if I see it in person, if I understand it in person, and I can ask questions uh, in, the, in the moment rather than hearing about it secondhand. Uh, and I can't do it all of the time, right? And, and these are things that it's easy for me to do, especially if it's just right around the street. But, um, uh, but it, it, I think it's important, too. You know, it's important to show up. It's important to show... Uh, people that you care, uh, regardless of what position that you're in, um, or or who you're managing, and uh, or what business you're managing. But yeah, it's it's one of those things for me. Is the more the more that I can show up and and the more that I can uh, figure out um, how things work, uh, the better decisions I can make, uh, and the better decisions I can and or the better recommendations I can make in partnership with those experts that I'm working with. Aubrey, I 100% agree with you. One of the things in terms of the rec, that recreation master plan or recreation comp plan, um, the, the thing for us is, um, 
and I don't know if it makes sense for the city to run independently our own recreation uh, programming, especially when we have initiatives for shared services, initiatives for shared services, um, a county, uh, a county that runs uh, some type of recreation program, a town and town partners that um, that uh, run a great recreation program. I think there's there's opportunity for us to look at the global um, uh, the global need for recreation in the region in the county, and work with people like the town of Plattsburgh and work with people like the YMCA. You know, the YMCA, we, we currently have a contract with the YMCA to, to uh, rent the uh, rec center on the old base oval. And that's something that we can double down on and, and work with them in partnership to expand the type of programming that our community wants and needs. But you're right, it, it, it feels to me right now, it's a piecemeal approach to solving a problem that's a more global approach that's a more global problem or a more global concern for the entire community, the entire region. Uh, Travis, I believe that your, um, uh, the comment about the downtown revitalization grant, there was, te you know, we go back and forth with this. this is still a topic of conversation. Um, I just did a, uh, an interview with Tom Halleck and Michael Cashman today, and that subject comes up. And, uh, you know, 4.3 million went to, uh, or is slated for the uh, Dirk Street development. Um, 5.7, it went to a, a bunch of other projects uh, as well. And those projects are still ongoing. Some of them are. Uh, downtown facade improvements. We've seen a number of downtown facades improved uh, on uh, both uh, Margaret Street and uh, Bridge Street. Uh, there's a downtown grant program which uh, is allocated to develop uh, second floor apartments and to improve second floor apartments in downtown. The Strand got a bunch of money for that as well. The Strand got a bunch of money for improving marketing and uh, marketing and uh, new uh, innovation space. So they're working on the, they're working through their project. We got marketing for money and signage uh, as well. So there's a, there, those things, some of them have been realized. But I think that I think that the thing that I, I found is the communication about those projects is, is lacking and the progress that those projects and improvements that those projects have made have been lacking. And so that's that's really up to you know this administration to make sure that people are aware of of where where that money is going, where it's been, uh, the status of that status of those projects as well. Tara, yeah, I a hundred percent like. You know, you and I are probably on the same team on this one. Um, the landlord tenant committee, yes, it was um, it was disbanded. The last issue that they dealt with was defining and outlining the fee structure for the um, for the uh, uh, rental registry. Absolutely, Travis. Um, the the last thing that they were tasked for was the rental registry. Uh, right now, the the application process for the rental registry is going through. Uh, there are a couple of landlords that the building inspector is working with, uh, and we are looking at um, sending letters to everybody else to say, hey, you know, we're giving you a little bit of a grace period. This is new for everybody. We're not trying to be uh, so heavy handed that, you know, if you didn't get your application in on the 1st of April, we're going to come down and, and, you know, bonk you on the head. Um, but after a month, if you don't get it in, maybe a little bit more than a month, if you don't get it in, then yes, we will come and bonk you on the head. So that's where things are at with that. Now, the concern that I have right now um, is less of an administrative concern uh, than it is a um, uh, than it is a, a concern for um, coverage. Now, in the city of Plattsburgh, we. You know, in the county, quite frankly, there's a housing crisis, and we've talked about this. We've we've identified the need for more housing. 
uh, for a range of housing options uh, from low to moderate income, um, affordable housing and high income, high rental or market rate housing, if you will. Uh, we, we, we've identified the need for, for a, a broad need for housing and housing, housing type. The concern with the rental registry at this point is not so much the administration of it. I think we'll get there, uh, to get to the administration, uh, the administrative part to it, uh, but the the scope of it right now it doesn't cover one and two unit, uh, one and duplex, one unit and uh, duplex properties, where the majority of those uh, rentals in the city uh, do fall under one and two uh, or one and one unit. Uh, and duplex or single family home and duplex homes. So I think towards the end of this year, when we make the assessment of how well the program is going, um, we'll look at expanding that uh, or what that would mean to expand it in to cover those properties. Um, aside from that, aside from the that land, the landlord tenant committee, um, you know, there there has been. Uh, there has been ebbs and flows of, of, land, of tenant uh, uh, advocacy uh, groups, uh, which I wish that there were more of, or, or that they could, um, you know, function uh, regularly. And, uh, but it's just a challenge. It's a challenge to have, you know, dedicated volunteers and, and, uh, and uh, people to uh, commit to that for a long term, but we do need that type of advocacy. We do need t that type of voice from the community. Uh, I did. I did see a, a comment about recycling bins and better trash cans around the city. Sorry. Yeah, no, I absolutely would. I absolutely would consider that, um, Tara. And, and you and I, should, we should really should sit down. I know, like I said, you and I are probably on the same page on this. Um, but I would love to love to sit down and chat about that. The I did see a, a, a comment about recycling bins and garbage bins in the city. Yes, 100%. That and... Uh, um, Garbage, garbage recycling, as well as yard waste. You got to work on that. Like, uh, you know, I was gonna, I was in the process of. Uh, I, I followed one of our, uh, our um, team, uh, one of the team around yesterday, uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, who was doing yard waste pickup. It is. Uh, I want to say this. I want to say this politically correct, and at the same time, I really don't. Uh, but I will. Uh, it is the most frustrating thing to watch uh, yard waste pickup for a couple of reasons. One is part of it from the from the business case, if you will, is that the city does this for free. The second part of it, though, is that we we pick up these plastic bags full of leaves. And, and we sit behind the truck, un, uh, ripping the plastic bag open, unloading the contents into the back of the truck, and then stuffing the plastic bag in another plastic bag. And then on the lucky stops, we get the paper bags. Then we just throw the paper bags in. That's not a big deal. Because we recycle all of this stuff. We, we, we compost it. We, post, we push it up to the Norco facility, the old Norco facility that we own up on Reeves Lane. Uh, you know, we, we churn it. We turn it into soil. And then we reuse it throughout the city. But just to see the wasted time on ripping open these plastic bags is just seems like nonsense to me. Um, it's very frustrating to watch and it's even frustrating to talk about, to be honest. Yeah, Mario, we are we're doing a lot of we're doing a lot of work in our infrastructure. A lot of work on infrastructure, a lot of work on our parks. And like I, like I mentioned earlier, there's a parks report that I'm going to send out. I posted it to the, you know what I did, I posted it to the press uh, today, uh, but I didn't post it to Facebook or the, uh, the um, uh, City of Plattsburgh uh, Facebook page.
or I'm just looking through some of the could the city require closed camps? You know, I think that I think what the I think one of the solutions to the city's garbage and recycling collection uh, would be is to um, standardize the cans, standardize the uh, the uh, bins that we use, similar to how Casella has their bins um, require the same bins that for the city uh, to, for the city to pick up. Because I agree, like you can you know you can buy any old bin. Uh, it's not standard. It's hard to collect. Sometimes the bins are overflowing. Sometimes people put their garbage on the street, uh, and it's just it's ugly. And we all know it's ugly. Uh, <laughs> we all complain about it. So it's one of those things to kind of you know it's time to do something about it. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you a tour. You guys want a tour? Tour of the office. All right, so this is where we do the business. Yeah, flip your on here. All right, so this is kind of where I make my coffee. I got some books and stuff, and you know, uh, try to get some reading in once in a while. Um, this is my desk. That's my ring light for YouTube and all that fun stuff. I'm still, you know, I I will say this. I need some art. So if you have um, a student in your life or a young person that wants to hang art in the mayor's office, I would love to host their art uh, and then give them a uh, tour of the office and come and hang out and take some pictures in the office or whatever, but I uh, would love to, have, love to have some art in the, in the office from um, some students in the area. Uh, this is the desk that I work at. I apologize for the state that it's in. Uh, like I said, I normally uh, take some time at the end of the night to uh, clean up. I just haven't uh, had a chance to do that. A little, another little seedy area. I have a bathroom in the back too, uh, so it's a little bathroom. Um, and my jackets and my recycling bin. Uh, my little seating area. So when I have meetings and I host people, you know, we get a little, uh, get a little seated area here. Um, nice little comfy spot to just like host people. It's you know I try to keep it quasi, quasi formal, uh, quasi informal. Um, so this is, uh, Beth Harlan's office. Uh, this is where she sits in here. Um, and, uh, kind of the files and stuff. This is, I'll walk through this way and this is kind of like the waiting area. It's a little bit of a mess, uh, just because we, uh, we're installing a new HVAC system, as you can see up there, um, right there. Um, it's a new, uh, high efficiency HVAC system. Um, no, the city did not pay for it. It was all grant funded. Uh, I have one in my office, new one. It replaces that radiator down there. Uh, this radiator got pulled out, but uh, new new HVAC system. Uh, a little waiting area as well for people to come in and kind of hang out and wait for the water cooler or whatever. That's the clerk's office. Walk through this door. This is kind of the main hall, the main area at City Hall. See, that's the city clerk. That's the mayor's office there. I know it's like, it's a little quiet and echoey in here. Uh, big anchor in the middle of the floor. Old chambers. Uh, and then the new, the new chambers are here. See the door's locked. I don't have my key, but the door's locked in there. But um, we will, we are likely to go back. I'm going to flip my camera on here. All right, cool. Uh, we're likely to go back to in person um, uh, the beginning of May. That's our uh, that's the schedule right now uh, to go back to in person. Most of the council and the department heads have been vaccinated, and we still certainly are concerned about um, social distancing and and how to operate effectively in COVID. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll continue to work um, to keep ourselves and everybody else safe. And yeah, Travis, come on down anytime. Yeah, count, you know, Councillor Canales mentioned something about you know meeting meeting uh, kids in the city. Absolutely, I would love to. Um, yeah, absolutely. Just you know, let me know. Let me know what works for you all, and I'll give you the tour and and everything else. And and <laughs> I will say this funny thing. I know it's a little bit of a side sidebar to this, but. Um, I've married uh, or performed this marriage ceremony for several people already. 
which is fascinating. It's so cool. And uh, I think I have three ceremonies booked uh, in uh, this month and next. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get married, come on down. I can, uh, I can perform your ceremony. How funny is that? I know my family right now is getting a kick out of that one. Uh, <laughs> so anyway. Well, there you got it, folks. I mean, this is, you know, this is the first 100 days. Um, I do get a little emotional, just the thought of like um, uh, the privilege of, that it is to uh, be of service to my community, the community that I grew up in and uh, that I love and that I moved home for. And uh, certainly really appreciate um, everything that you all do and, and all the support that you all provided and, and continue to provide your suggestions. Um, you know, anytime you need me, quite frankly, just give me a call, um, tag me on Facebook, Hit me on Twitter, slide into my DMs, whichever. Um, I'm always available. I'm always around. Um, uh, Brenda, I agree. Uh, uh, Mom, no, I have not been vaccinated. I get my second vaccination on Friday. But I have talked to Haven about coming out, by the way. So, um, yeah, absolutely, Richard, no problem. Um, and about the handicap accessibility, yes, absolutely. You know, one of the things in City Hall alone um, and you know, it's embarrassing to be honest. The part of it is embarrassing. Like there's paint chipping off the walls there. You know, we know that we have a hole in the roof, uh, that we've done nothing about. Um, thanks ma. And, um, you know, it's, it's, we have to invest in, just like we do in our parks. We've got to invest in what we have. You know, we have to invest in our assets. You wouldn't let, you know, you wouldn't walk in your own house and see paint chipping off the wall and not do nothing with it. Right. So, um, it's one of those things like, yeah. You know, we have to, we have to, uh, we got to do a better job here. You know, we, we have to uh, be mindful of the job that we're doing and, and do better. We can always do better and we always have to look to do better. And that's, that's the, that's the thought here. Um, uh, in terms of ADA accessibility, that's one of the reasons why we're investing in our sidewalks to make sure that people, you know, they can travel our sidewalks and they can travel our city safe. Uh, the same thing with, um, uh, the same thing with our city hall. You know, we haven't invested in our city hall. Um, uh, I, we haven't invested in our city hall and, you know, quite honestly, we need to, we need to do that. We need to invest. We have an elevator, but we don't have a very clear uh, ability to access city hall from a, from an ADA compliance. And so we're, we're, we are working on that. We're doing a capital project for next year, uh, to improve city hall, uh, as well as our sidewalks and accessibility to city, to city properties. Um, but I do appreciate your advocacy and pointing that out and, um, and, uh, really appreciate everybody. Uh, I, I should get off this thing before I start crying. <laughs> uh, I am a crier. It's, people don't know that about me, but uh, yeah, I get I get emotional. I get moved by you know just the uh, uh, the commitment that uh, people show in the community, and and there's there's a lot of great people, um, a lot of great people here. So uh, I really appreciate it. Like I said, y'all need me. Tag me on Facebook. Um, you know, follow me on YouTube as well, and. Uh, you know, just get in touch, get in touch. If you need anything, get in touch with me or by the way, there's two counselors that I've seen respond on here and, and, uh, they are, they are as dedicated as I am to your community. Like get in touch with them. They've advocated for so many projects. A lot of the things that we're doing, uh, a lot of the things that we're doing, Oh, Cashman, there he is. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, a lot of the things that we're doing in the city, they're advocating for, they're pushing for these projects. They're pushing for these initiatives. You know, I got one counselor that came in that uh, threw $2,000 at the city just to rebuild some parks, right? So they're as dedicated to the city as I am, um, and their responses, uh, they're as responsive as, as I am. And uh, I really, really do encourage you to get in touch with your counselor, know who your counselor is. If you don't know who they are, uh, DM me, I'll put you in touch with them. Uh, thanks, Mom. Uh, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate all your time. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Uh, let me know if you need me. All right, but I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, sign off here in a moment. Mark, thanks for jumping on too. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Aubrey. Cashman, thanks for jumping on, man. Christina, thanks for being here. Counselor Canales, Counselor Talon, I really appreciate you being on here. 
Elise, thank you. Tara, please get in touch with me. Francis, thank you, and thanks for coming home. Travis, get in touch with me, all right? Let's get those kids in here and let's do a little tour and, a, and an intro. Sue, I will see you next month. This is true. I'm excited for that. So is Miles. Richard, thanks for jumping on. Haven, thanks for jumping on. Susan, thank you. You rock. Brenda, thanks for asking your question too, okay? And thanks for jumping on. Mark, thanks for jumping on if I haven't said it. Francis, thank you. Patty Ann, thank you. I really appreciate you all jumping on. I really do. Yeah, we are, in terms of public events, yeah, we are working on a number of public events. Uh, Mayor's Cup, we're planning for Mayor's Cup. We're planning for uh, Battle of Plattsburgh. We're planning for 4th of July. A lot of this is going to rely on some of the um, uh, 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 the guidelines for how we can operate in the next coming months, but we are certainly planning for these things. So st please stay tuned and, and really just like get be involved and, and stay engaged because we're uh, we're ready for it. Uh, Matthew, I appreciate that, but um, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Haven, there's always crying in politics. You 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 should be involved. <laughs> You would know. You would know that there's tons of crying in politics. Awesome. Thanks, folks. I'm going to sign off now. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, and I'll see you around the community.